Five minutes left. Five minutes left. Totally, you got ten minutes, right? You need an extension? Yes, you're done? Yeah, okay, very really good. You have about one minute left. About 10 seconds left. Who's not done yet? No, I'm almost done. 
Good, 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 Thirty seconds left. Okay, it's about time to to stop. About about ten, nine. You can do it. Just have to come on time, right? Just that. Uh, I tried to do RK four, and we did something wrong. But okay, we'll get back to that. Last time we talked about um, double hop up model, right? And now we're going to. Finish double half flat model. Okay, hopefully we finish double half flat model. And let's talk a little bit about closure relationship. So we have critical height. Did I talk about that? Critical height. Yes. 
I showed the derivation of this equation, double half bar model. Equilibrium height, equilibrium level. So from the governing equation, we derive together. Okay, we have that, right? From that, the top part showed me the equilibrium height. The bottom part is critical height. Critical height is where slope is equal to infinity. We have to start a little bit lower than critical height. Okay. So from this, if we attempt to do mass balance to find the length of the film, what happens is this. You see that part? A little bit on the top. That's the model doesn't capture that. Okay. So if we do this for a high viscosity oil, which have a thick film on the top, there's a lot left on the top. And this model, or even tidal bunny, doesn't capture that. Okay. So this is for the case where the film on the top is negligible, very small amount, like flow of and water. Okay. For high viscosity oil, don't expect to get Doing this, don't expect to get the right film height. Okay. Uh, you may get the right film height in the sense that okay, everything is based on the moment of balance, but this thing neglect. It doesn't capture the top film. So when we do mass balance, the top film should be in the mass balance too, but it won't because we cannot calculate it. So this means the film length is not what it should be. But it should be close if the top film is thick. Okay. All right. We talk about how to calculate it, right? Critical level, equilibrium level. Okay. The parameter for the model. Um, last time I kind of go through it pretty quick, right? So let's review it again. This part. Um, it's about closure relationship. The model here requires some information. Okay. It's not like we have everything. We need to get liquid hole up in the slug body from closure relationship, which is HLOS. We need to know somehow get VTB. VTB, uh, previously we said that, hey, VTB is one plus C multiplied by Vs, right? Okay, so this means the telebubble velocity or translational velocity is the average velocity plus the movement of the interface due to the entrapment, due to the pickup process. Okay, that is also in the old world, right? But it is not just that. Okay, if it is just that, we have just these two terms. Okay. So which equation on what page that tell me C1 plus C multiplied by Vs equal to Vtb? Which one? It's about film hydrodynamics. 92, maybe? Yes, 92. 3.91, we have 3.91. VGB equal to C0 Vs. And on the top it says Vs equal to Vm. Okay, so this means it's just that part. Where does that come from? Where does that come from? So if we use just Vs multiplied by 1.2, let's say we don't have average movement. Vs equal to zero, Vm equal to zero, we don't put anything in. This, that way of doing it say, uh, means that there will be no movement of bubble. Okay. If we don't have anything flow, bubble doesn't move. So if we mix the velocity equal to zero, bubble doesn't move. But that's not true. Okay. If we have um, container, one part is gas or air, 
Another part is water. I have a wall over there. I remove the wall, take it out. Air will deform, right? And it will spread on the top part. So bubble can move. Or you can have a pipe full with liquid. One end is closed. I open this end. I open it up. Liquid come out and go inside. What happened? Bubble keep moving in the pipe, right? With the shape similar to elongated bubble shape. So in that case, we don't have kind of average movement. We have very small, okay, but VTB is not small. So this means we need another term. That term is drift velocity. It's about the velocity of the bubble when um, we don't have average movement of Vm. When Vm equals to zero, the bubble movement is V drift, drift velocity. So the equation that you get on page 92 is correct, but it's not all, it's not complete. So that is the, the movement of the front due to picking up mass. That is also due to something else, such as the drift velocity or the spreading of air bubble. Okay, that's why we have this one. Okay, this is from Ben Dixon. And if you look at it, it depends on angle. Okay, for horizontal, that term gone, but we still have this term. Okay, 0.54 square root GD. Okay, in this equation, 1.2 is for turbulent, 2 is for laminar. So this is one of the closure relationship. 109. Okay. 109 is about closure relationship. Next one is about length of the slug body. 30 diameter. Okay. That is true only for the case where we are away from the inlet and we have like steady state slug flow. Close to the inlet, gas bubble merge to each other become longer and longer and longer, the field become longer, right? So it takes some time for the steady state condition to occur for slug flow. Okay. That should not be any problem for a subsea pipeline. That is like, okay, one feet ID, but it's like 50 miles. No problem, right? Any, anywhere you're looking at, most of the time is away from the inlet. But in the lab, it can be matter. Okay, so LU is slug unit. Slug unit depends on um, VTB or the movement of the tailor bubble. Okay, if we have ten bubble or ten slug, oh, oh, let's let's do something easy. One slug per one second. I look at the same point. Every second, I have one slug. Every second, I have one slug. Every second, I have one slug. And I know that the slug, the bubble speed of VTB is two meter per second. What do you think is the length of one slug unit? Two, right? Okay. So that is VTB multiplied by the time required for one slug to pass over one second or VTB over frequency. So frequency is nu is 1 over t, and t is a period of time for one slug cycle to happen. Okay. Nu is just 1 over that. So slug length is VTB over nu. I bet you read the textbook, right? Which page number has this equation? Or where are we at? What are we talking about? 96, maybe? The last one? See that? 
96. Okay, this is about the length. Length of the film, of course, is the length of the slug unit minus length of just the slug body part or 30 diameter. Okay. okay, the next one is a closure relationship. Maybe you have 108 or 109 something. It, uh, it 109? Uh, 111. So, nu is a function of several other parameters. So this is Zabara, Zabara's closure relationship to find frequency, slug frequency. Okay. Be careful with the unit part, okay? Whatever they use, we have to use that. They use meter, we use meter. If they use feet, we use feet. Okay. In this particular equation, if you read the description, it says VSL is in feet per second. G is not 9.8 but 32.2 feet per second square. D has to be in feet. With that, we will get new in hertz or one more second. Okay. The next one is slug body liquid form. Okay. When we do transition calculation, Bernie suggests 0.6, right? You remember that? Transition B, right? 0.6. If we want to get more accurate, we use this equation. Okay. HLRS, slug body liquid form. Transition B. Transition B. We assume 0.6 for slug body liquid hole up. You don't recall that? We, if, if liquid phase contain, uh, if the slug contain 100% liquid, transition B will be at HL Tudor of 0.5, right? But because it's not 100% liquid. So I think it is it's not 0.6, it's a point. 0.7. 0.65 or, or 0.7 or something okay. I'm sorry, 0.7, not 0.6. So because of that, then we have transition B at 0.35. So HLLS has to be calculated from closure relationship. Okay, this equation itself work for any angle, but it will be valid for the case that it is developed from, okay? And this particular one is not for high viscosity oil, is it? Mm. So if we have high viscosity oil, this equation is not going to be correct. If you give some estimation, but it's, it will be off. High viscosity oil tends to have big bubble inside, not various of small bubble. Okay. And that is validated for a certain pipe diameter. Okay. At a certain pressure. So if we have bigger pipe diameter, maybe it won't be correct. So what I'm saying is even though we have all the closure relationship, it doesn't mean that everything is done. It means that, okay, we have a framework, but we have to work more on it to complete everything. All right. With all this, there's another problem happen. Okay. If we happen to do um, the model, get VTB, get HLRS, do the calculation, get the film, uh, do the mass balance something, and the output will be like slug length or pull up something. It won't be matched. And you will see by yourself. So without any calculation in chart, this means that all of this may not be correct at the same time. So let's say I use the model double humper. I get every parameter. I get pull up as the input. Okay. Uh, and my frequency output may not be and most likely doesn't match with that. Okay. 
So you may take HMMS and snap link as an input. My frequency may not match with that. Okay. So it, it it may not be matched everything all at once. So we start the calculation of the compound of the curves. We need about two to three, yes. And you will see the, the actual calculation procedure later that we will talk about it. But when I, when I try, um, it has some it has some problem to match everything all at once. Okay. Uh, we will talk about the calculation procedure step by step, and you will see which variable require what. But that's for later. Okay, calculation steps for later. Okay, last time we were at this slide. Okay, this is about um, calculate fin profile for horizontal flow. I have, oh, uh, I set the inclination angle to be five degree, and I try to use both method. Okay, I have water density, viscosity. I select VSR of five six, VSR of five six, per one, per two, per three, per four, per five, per six. So like that line. Oh. That is the line, operating point. So I should have slug flow right, based on this map. Okay. And I use flow about 1.2, viscosity, um, get from internet, or typical value of air viscosity, VSG is 10 meter per second, that is to intentionally get slug flow. Let's see what happens. So the step here, number one, I calculate Reynolds number based on superficial velocity. Okay. Reynolds number based on VSL, Reynolds number based on VSG. Both of them show that it's fully turbulent flow. So if it's more than 2100, it's not laminar flow, but it can be transition flow. But if it is more than 4000, we can consider it as fully turbulent, uh, fully turbulent flow. Okay. So when we have that, uh, that is to see, are we going to have slug flow intuitively? So guess what? If both of them become laminar flow, maybe we have elongated bubble flow. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So next we can write VTB, use quotient relationship. I put every, every number in. Okay, VM is VSR plus VSG equal to 10.6. Okay. So now I have VM. And I have G, 9.8, D, 0.0254, uh, and put everything in, I get VTB, okay? C0 is, in this case is 1.2, that I put in. Um, then I use HLRS from Gomez et al, 2000. Get the value of HLRS, 0.94, okay? HRS correlation require a Reynolds number based on LS, okay, slug Reynolds number. Uh, this value is based on rho VMD over mu, it's in the book, okay, yes. Why the other case where one of the Reynolds numbers is It's not, it's going to be something strange. Like, let's say high viscosity oil. For high viscosity oil, you do have like liquid phase, less than 2100. So it looks like laminar flow everywhere, but when it hit with gas, it's actually mixed. It has a mixing front. So it's a combination between uh, laminar flow and turbulent flow. When that happened, C0, does it need to be 1.2? Does it need to be 2? It is something else. So this calculation just used to tell me what should I use for C0? Actually, C0 should be calculated based on RELS, not each of them, okay? Because inside is a kind of mixture for the approximation. If you want it to be very correct, you do this. 
Calculate HLRS. Once you have HLRS, calculate density, average density, average viscosity in the slug body. Okay. And then get RERS later. Because of this, C0 is 1.2, substitute the value in, I get 13 meter per second. Okay. Now I calculate x value in double humpback model. We assume VLRS equal to VGLS. VL is liquid velocity, which is gas velocity. We assume that it's fully mixed, even though it's like 5 degrees upward. Okay. And then we need to do something else. Okay, but for now we assume it's the same. Substitute the value in. Vs equal to Vm, right? Rho we have, A we have, HLRS come from Gomez, then we can calculate X, 0.6 kilogram per second. Okay. Boundary condition to do the integration. Z equal to zero. HF at Z equal to zero. HF equal to that much. Okay, our HF tilde is some pre-calculated value. This is based on this whole point 94. So point 94. This this case is for one inch pipe, right? One inch pipe, 2.54 centimeter. So HF is about half of two. 2.54, half of, about half of 2.54 is about that, okay? So this won't be accurate. If we say, hey, HF is approximately equal to HLLF, or HLLS. This is okay, but it's not exactly correct. At point 0.5, Height over diameter equal to hole up. Yes, at 0.5. Okay. But above 0.5 and below 0.5, you have to use cold state to be accurate. You see what I'm saying? But you mean above the half of the... Look at this. When I have pipe, liquid occupy half of the pipe, hole up is 0.5. Liquid is 0.5. Okay. But when it's about 0.75, okay, the ratio of height and liquid is not the same. Okay. If you have rectangle shape, we go up whatever, the height ratio is equal to area ratio. But in this case, because it's not straight up, so they are not the same. You just close it. But for this, we just okay, do a quick approximation. Oh, I didn't do quick approximation, I used whole seed. So when I use HF equal to that much, it made HRTB at Z equal to zero equal to HRRS. Okay. Basically, use the equation that you have AR equal to something and make it to be uh, whole up, then do whole seed on that equation. Then I check another boundary condition that I need is what is the velocity of liquid phase at z equal to zero? Okay, the velocity of liquid phase at that point I use Vs or 10.6. Where is that 10.6? 10.6 is Vm. Right? Vm equal to Vs, 10.6. So now I check the critical level. Critical level. Okay, instead of using cos I do something else. I expand it, and of course, that is your quiz, right? Okay, I expand it, and I have HRTB formula. I do the plot. The numerator with various input value of HF over D. Recall that the numerator is just a function of height over diameter. I can put anything in, but the right height over diameter will make the numerator equal to zero. So I use graphical approach, not for sake. So I, I do the plot. 
this equation with h tilde equal to something, h tilde equal to something, 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 I get the result, right? It won't be zero unless at the current point. So I know that, hey, h critical is about 0.995, okay? And what is my initial condition? Initial condition is less than that. Okay, initial condition is just about half. So we are way below the critical height. So this means for mass balance to happen, we don't have the curved part on the top. Okay, this suggests that we don't have curved part on the top. Of course, it's a little bit difficult when you incline the pipe for the for the bubble to have for the most of the bubble to have something on the top half. Okay, next I check equilibrium height. Okay, where's the equilibrium height? I use the same trick. Um, no, okay. This is, I think, a denominator, not numerator. So I put numerator and do the same plot. Put different input for H, F over D and find out at which location make the numerator equal to zero. You remember that, right? This equation has top and bottom part. So I take just the bottom, I just take just the top part and put different value of H tilde and put the graph. This is what I got. So I found that hey, the equilibrium liquid height is somewhere between 0 0.141 and 0 0.142. Okay. Now I use IK45 to do the calculation. Okay. Um, this thing give me um, orange dot, several orange dot. I use another model that we are about to do that is more appropriate for inclined pipe. I get a blue dot. Which one is correct? The blue one, because the orange one is just for horizontal chaos. Okay. Um, the calculation stop where z equal to LF. What is LF? LF come from uh, LU minus LS. Right? LU minus LS. LU is C0 VM plus V drift from Ben Dixon. All right. Um, now I do other case, okay? Now I try to, okay, increase VSL while VSD stay the same, okay? This shorten the film region. So when I, I try to play with the number, so this case is 0 0.6 and 10, and another one is 2 and 10. So when I do the case for 2 and 10, have more VSL, I get shorter film length. Okay, and the film profile is a little bit different. So this means that the program that you have can calculate, not you have, that I have can calculate anything. The program that you have may be in the technical exam or something. Okay. So I did try several other cases, okay. I found that regular explicit Euler may not work. I really need adaptive step, like RK45. So if you look at each of these graph, you will see that it's about equal interval. Actually, it's not equal interval, but uh, we kind of discretize more near the place where the phenomena change quick and we discretize less or bigger gap when the phenomena change slow. Okay? That is the capability of RK45. But you can use domain prints, which is better. Okay, but at that time I have just this. RK45. If I have uh, the shape like drop quick, okay, it's very steep here. What is the slope over there? Almost infinity, right? Almost infinity. And if I do anything, it's going to be okay, a lot. So 
I can for five help me to go small. Got it? All right. So let's let's do something for the case where um, you're going to do for your exam. I mean, take home exam. You probably will do that for take home exam. This, this time is correct. We did something wrong over there. The, the method that is easy enough to use, we call RK4. Okay? If it is just explicit Euler, it's just that. Okay? So this means I have a function f. D F oh, no dy by dx equal to function between x and y. Okay, I have that. So this means I have a function. If I know the slope at the current point, I get k1. K1 is the slope at the current point. So look at K2. So this is the average slope approach. Okay. Intuitively, I can put slope at the first point, slope at the middle, and slope at the end, and average them like this. 1 over 6, 1, 2, 2, 1 for each slope. Okay. You can just Google out here for you, you find exactly the same. So this is the average slope. K1 is the slope at the initial point. K2 is the slope at the middle point. But look, your function, which is a slope function, f is a slope function, is required the knowledge of x and y. You probably know what is x at the middle, right? Because you need to know the starting point. But you never know what is y value on this height at the middle point. You just don't. It's an answer, okay? It's not something that we have. So this means we have to guess the value of y at that point. The best guess that I can have is linear extrapolation. So I say, okay, at the middle point, x value is x plus h over 2. But y value will be y plus slope at the first point multiplied by the gap, which is h over 2. Okay. So this is a linear approximation to get the height at the middle part. Got it? Huh? Any question? Still fine? Uh, not quite. So function may require the value of y. The slope at the middle point may require the value of y. Okay. So we have to estimate the value of y, but this time we estimate the value of y based on the slope at the initial point. Now we get the slope at the middle point. Then we use that to calculate k3. We calculate the slope at the middle point again, based on the y value that, that calculated from extrapolation of k2. k2 is the slope at the middle point. So instead of using the slope at the initial point, we use the slope at the middle point to estimate the y value at the middle point. Okay? Then we think it will be better. Then we get k3. k3 is a slope at the middle point. Now we can put a slope at the end point, k4. k4 y value we approximate by use k3. Then we average it like this. Actually, there's a long derivation to get this. It's like a Taylor series expansion or something. But in short, this is a formula. Okay. And I think I did try, and there is some mistake. But let's show you now, and next time I try to update this. Uh, I have 
function e to the power minus x plus one, that is the actual function that I want to get. Okay, try to catch. What did I do wrong? Okay, I take the derivative of this function. I get minus e to the power of minus x. Is that correct? Can I do it right? Okay. Next, I say okay at x equal to zero, f x, which is this. Okay, I mean the solution equal to two. So this is used for the initial value that I have. So next, I put x value at zero. At x equal to zero, y equal to two. Okay. This part has something wrong, but let's take a look at explicit Euler. I did it correct for explicit Euler. Um, for explicit Euler, I put number two, so this is y value. So the next point, the next y value is the previous point, which is two, plus the slope, which is k one, right? Multiplied by the gap, which is that point. This is just explicit Euler, and then I get that value. Next, I do another explicit Euler, but now I use the slope. At the point of point o one, that is a slope. Okay, and then I will multiply by the gap. Keep doing that. I get the answer. The exact answer is this column, so it is close enough. Okay. When I do a for I did something wrong. Okay, I update it, but when I get it, it's not quite close, so it's obviously wrong. For me to know if I did it wrong or not, I compare it with explicit Euler. Okay. This cheat, I will update it and upload it on the platform. Okay. So hopefully, even though you don't use RK45, but you can use RK4 to solve all the film profile. Question? You will be able to get that, right? When we take home exam, it just give me the flow transition. Is that better? 